So chances are, if you clicked on this video, you either have one of these and want to be able to code on it, you're looking to buy one of these looking to be able to code on it, or you're actually a fan of mine who is very excited to see my first video in about two years. All right, so uh, let's get started. So first things first, I just wanna get the pressing question out of the way. Can you code on this thing? The answer is yes and no, and really leaning more towards no, and I'll get more into why that is in just a little bit, but the iPad that I have right here and that I've been using for just about two years now is the 2020 iPad Air. It's a very powerful device, has the Apple A14 Bionic chip in it, four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. It is very capable of programming and that's just because that programming, especially smaller scripts and what I would imagine most people would be writing on a device like this is actually very easy for most computers to compile. Even more complex scripts I would imagine would run uh, with ease but as soon as you get into large software systems then you're probably going to run into more of a slowdown especially if you're looking into to using a device like this but of course if you are a programmer or even if you're starting off it's pretty simple to imagine that an iPad would be not a terrible device to use for programming however one of the big things that sets the iPad back and in comparison to most other devices is of course the software now the hardware is more than capable in my opinion but the software has always been something that apple just always wants to try and make the ipad as close to the mac without making it a mac and i understanding that putting mac os on a device like this even though i would imagine it's actually probably perfectly capable of running would cannibalize the Mac ecosystem as far as sales go. So no, they're probably not gonna be putting Mac OS on this computer anytime soon. Apple did also announce the successor to this as well as the iPad Air that both have the new M1 Mac chip, which brings it even closer to the computers in that aspect, which really begs the question, bro, just put Xcode on the iPad and on that front, throw a terminal on there as well. So most of trying to figure out what actually works and what doesn't on the iPad is just going on the app store, typing in something like terminal, programming, coding, text editor, seeing what pops up, installing a bunch of them, and just kind of seeing what sticks. And I was able to find a couple different programs that work to varying degrees. And there's also the two programs that I personally use for coding every once in a while. My iPad, just as a disclaimer, is not my daily driver when it comes to programming, not even close. And I'll be discussing the capabilities of the iPad, which kind of reveals why it's not my daily driver. So the two main applications that I use personally for programming on the iPad is a terminal slash compiler and your text editor. Now the text editor is was actually the more difficult option to find when trying to look for options to program on the iPad. The reason for this is the iPad's file system is usable, but it's not ideal. I personally was looking for a text editor that would allow me to save the .c, .py, or just the text file for the specific programming language that I would be writing in to a file and have that file be easily accessible through the files app on the iPad, which would allow me to move the file onto a flash drive, or I could move the file up to GitHub or whatever kind of repository service you would like using Git. However, I was only actually able to find one text editor that allowed this, and this text editor is called Coder. It's a relatively simple text editor, but for the uses that I've used it for, it's worked pretty well. There are some paid services that you can get with this app, but for what it does, it works works pretty well. You basically create your file, you can save that file, and then you can actually go into the coder folder within the files app and actually find that file in there. And the reason that this is very useful is that coder can also be used to open files that are in different directories, which I believe brings us to our second application 
I personally use ISH, which is a an Alpine based terminal for the iPad that works surprisingly well. And it even allows you to install packages, which I did not think was going to be possible on an iPad. Now, what's cool about this is ISH actually creates its own Linux subdirectory, which allows you to kind of create directories within that area that you can uh, change. You can kind of CD to and do your standard Linux commands, which allows you to use using the touch command to create new files. And then if you go into the files app on the iPad, click on the file, it will actually open with coder. Now this all sounds well and good. And with these two programs, it kind of seems like that you're pretty much all set when it comes to programming on the iPad. But if that were the case, I wouldn't be saying that it's kind of a mixed bag when it comes to being able to code on it. The reason I say this is ISH, as great as it is, is not super great at installing packages. Now, most of the packages that I tried to install were actually for the Python programming language. One of the more popular packages for Python is Pandas. And these are very, very important libraries if you want to pretty much do anything useful within Python. Unfortunately, pandas and a lot of other Python packages just completely failed to download. It looks like it was going to download and then it would just stall. And there was even times where I would let this installation run for hours at a time and it just never ended up working. There was a lot of different more experimental things that I attempted to do with the ISH app that it just unfortunately couldn't do. You can do relatively simple things and one of the things that I actually use ISH for the most is as an SSH client. However, like I said, lots of other libraries don't work and that's where this kind of all kind of falls apart. Another thing is Coder is not a perfect text editor. It works well enough for what I need it to do and it pretty much does exactly what I want it to do, but there are some weird bugs sometimes where the file that you were editing in Coder will just disappear. I haven't looked into this recently, and this may have been fixed, but this is a pretty big problem, especially if you are working on a really big project that you haven't saved in a while or made a copy of or pushed to GitHub, and then it just vanishes. Make sure if you're going to be using these two programs in tandem, pay attention to the files that you're going to be using. As as far as other text editors, there are God knows how many text editors on the App Store. If you look, you will find a bunch of them, but Coder was the only one that I was able to find that had that file system that I specifically wanted from a text editor. I did also find two other terminals, A shell and libterm, and they both work to varying degrees. Uh, I believe libterm has clang built in for C compilation, but using both of them, uh, I just found that ISH was just the best one across the board, and it worked most similarly to a terminal that I was already familiar with. So that's pretty much all I had to say. The iPad is a pretty cool device, and I've been using it every single day since I got it for streaming videos, watching movies, writing short documents, looking up homework, browsing the web. It's very good as, I would say, a secondary device, but especially for me being a programmer, it's just not all that useful in the realm of programming. Maybe Apple will finally suck it up and throw Xcode, which is a very, very fantastic IDE, on the iPad and hopefully throw a terminal on there as well. Once we have those two things, we're pretty much all set. There are also alternatives such as using an SSH client, remoting into a desktop that maybe you keep always on at home and various things like that, that you can actually use with the iPad. But I find that being able to do most of your programming directly on the device that you're programming on is just, it just feels a lot better. It's a lot less of a hassle than having to use a remote client or uh, using it through the web or something like that. So that's pretty much all I had to say. If you had a better experience programming on the iPad and you found an app that I didn't talk about that you think is actually really useful, paid apps such as I wanna say Pythonista, um, but those apps can go above $10 and I don't wanna spend money. So <laughs> both all of the apps that I discussed about today, except for that one, are all completely free. There might be some paid stuff within the apps itself that gives you more functionality. But yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. So let me know if you found any apps that you personally use to program on the iPad. 
Uh, let me know if the apps that I told you about actually were helpful and you're now using the iPad as a daily driving device to program uh, for some reason. Like and subscribe if you like the video. I make a lot of videos about technology and check out my back catalog. I talk about a bunch of different things. I'll put them here, I think. I, there's probably gonna be the iCard. I have Instagram, Twitter, and I also stream. I used to stream on Twitch, but now I'm streaming on YouTube. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.